Hello everyone, my name is Rodrigo, I'm one of the master students, and I'm here to talk to you about the hip region. But first, look at this video. In that video, you might think I got knocked out because of my terrible taekwondo skills, to which I tell you shut up and I hate you. In reality, that happened because of my opponent's powerful and strong hip muscles. Let's talk about these muscles, because they're so important, from running up a flight of stairs to walking, or even kicking people you don't like. So let's focus on them. Our hips are massive, and discussing all of it in one chunk is confusing. So instead, let's follow the line of thought of an ancient philosopher, Jack the Ripper. Let's go in parts. The hip region can be divided into two separate regions, the gluteal region and the inner hip region. So let's start by discussing the gluteal region for no specific reason. There are also the pelvic floor muscles and some other structures, but we're not really going to talk about these because they don't really act in the lower limbs. So the gluteal region extends from the pelvic girdle to the proximal end of the femur. The most superficial muscle in this region is the gluteus maximus. So let's talk about it. All right, so this is the gluteus maximus. You can see it's a very superficial and large muscle. If I remove it, you can see there are many other muscles that we'll discuss in a second that lie underneath it. The gluteus maximus has a few important functions. The ones that you really should remember are leg extension, leg external rotation, and there's also some degree of adduction with the superior part of the muscle and adduction with the inferior part of the muscle. The entire muscle is innervated by the inferior gluteal nerve, which comes from roots L5 to S2. Alright, so now let's talk about gluteus medius and gluteus minimus. So gluteus medius is this muscle here, and gluteus minimus is underneath this muscle. Both of them perform important functions, which are thigh abduction and thigh internal rotation. Both of them are innervated by the superior gluteal nerve, which comes from roots L4 to S1. When you have damage to the superior gluteal nerve, you present with a trendabellum gait, and that's because of deficits in these muscles mostly. Alright, now let's move this this way, and here you can see another important muscle, which is also considered a muscle of the gluteal region, the tensor fascia lata. The tensor fascia lata, think of it as like an ugly looking jack of all trades. Its main function is to tense the iliotibial tract, and by doing so, it can help perform several functions in the lower limb. In the hip joint, this muscle performs internal rotation, but also a small degree of abduction. In the knee joint, this muscle performs a small degree of external rotation, but depending on the position of the leg, it can help in either leg extension or leg flexion. So it's a bit of a strange one. All right, and this weird looking muscle is also innervated by the superior gluteal nerve. So L4 to S1 spinal roots. So unfortunately, this is us done with the gluteal region. But don't leave just yet. Now we're gonna talk about the inner hip muscles. All right, so let's start off a bit of a strange one. Let's talk about the iliacus, which you can see here, and the psoas major muscle, which you can also see here. Both these muscles, because they have a common insertion to the lesser trochanter, and because they perform relatively similar functions in the hip joint, sometimes they're referred to as the iliopsoas muscle. Both of these muscles act to perform thigh flexion, but also thigh external rotation. They can also act on the trunk to help trunk flexion if contracted bilaterally, or if contracted unilaterally, they can perform trunk lateral flexion. However, here's the tricky part about this muscle. The iliacus and the psoas major have different innervations. The iliacus is innervated by the femoral nerve, which has spinal roots L2 to L4. Whereas the psoas major muscle is innervated by the anterior roots of L1 to L3. So don't forget that, they have different innervations. Alright, so around 60 to 65% of the population also have an additional muscle in this region called the psoas minor muscle, which has pretty much the same functions and very similar innervation to the psoas major muscle but it's just a lot weaker and not as useful. Think of it as like the Luigi of the psoas muscles, just not as cool and not as strong as Mario. All right, the next group of muscles we'll discuss all have the same function. These include obturator externus, obturator internus, superior gemellus, 
inferior gemellus, and piriformis muscle. All of these muscles perform thigh external rotation and thigh abduction. There's also the quadratus femoris muscle, but this muscle only performs thigh external rotation. It doesn't really play a role in thigh abduction. Importantly, the nerve supply to these muscles varies from one to the other. So pay attention because this is about to get a bit confusing. All right, so the obturator internus muscle and the superior gemellus muscle are innervated by the nerve to obturator internus from spinal roots L4 to S1. The obturator externus muscle is innervated by the obturator nerve with spinal roots L3 and L4. Don't get confused between the obturator nerve and the nerve to obturator internus. They are different nerves. Our inferior gemellus and the quadratus femoris muscle are innervated by the nerve to quadratus femoris from spinal roots L4 to S1. The piriformis muscle is innervated by the nerve to piriformis, which is from spinal roots S1 to S2. Besides the gluteal region and the inner hip muscles, there are other muscles that act on the hip joint. Let's start off by the muscles of the anterior compartment of the thigh that act on the hip joint. There's two muscles in this region. First one is sartorius, which is this long S-shaped like muscle. And it acts at the hip joint by performing some hip flexion. It also acts on the knee by aiding in some internal rotation of the knee joint. The second one is the rectus femoris, which you can see just here. The rectus femoris aids in some flexion of the hip joint, but also in knee extension. Both of these muscles, the sartorius and the rectus femoris, are innervated by the femoral nerve, which originates from spinal roots L2 to L4. In the posterior compartment of the thigh, you have your hamstring muscles, which in some way contribute to movements of the hip joint. These include the biceps femoris, the semitendinosus, and the semimembranosus muscles. So these act by performing thigh extension, as well as knee flexion. So all of your hamstring muscles are innervated by the biggest nerve in the human body, the sciatic nerve, which you can see coming down here. This nerve is made from spinal roots L4 to S3. Here we can see the adductor compartment of the thigh, or the medial compartment of the thigh. Most of the muscles in this compartment are going to act to adduct the thigh. With some exceptions, such as pectineus, which is going to perform some degree of thigh flexion. It also has a double innervation, so pectineus is innervated by the femoral nerve and by the obturator nerve, both of them from roots L2 to L4. So the innervation of the muscles in the adductor compartment, most of them are going to be innervated by the obturator nerve, roots L2 to L4. Other muscles in the adductor compartment include the gracilis muscle, which also adducts the thigh, but also performs a small degree of knee flexion. Additional muscles include adductor longus, adductor brevis, which also adduct the thigh. Some resources also mention adductor minimus, which also just adducts the thigh. Lastly, there's a bit of a strange one in this compartment, which is adductor magnus. This muscle also adducts the thigh, but it can also perform a small degree of thigh extension, but also thigh flexion. So it's a bit of a strange one. So the adductor magnus muscle also has dual innervation. One of them from the obturator nerve, again roots L2 to L4, but also from the tibial division of the sciatic nerve. All right, now let's talk about some of the ligamentous structures of your hip. Firstly, there's this very important structure here, this Y-shaped structure. This is the iliofemoral ligament and it helps prevent hyperextension of the hip joint. There are these other ligaments, which include the pubofemoral ligament, and here on the back, the ischiofemoral ligament, which also helps stabilize the hip joint. Importantly, these ligaments form almost a capsule-like structure, which helps protect the hip joint. And if you look in here, you can see the ligament of head of femur, which also helps anchor the head of femur to the acetabulum. All right, so here I have a pelvis and here I had a femur. This is the head of the femur, this is the acetabulum. And they go kind of like this in a real person. So in the acetabulum, you can see a transverse acetabular ligament, which helps stabilize the joint. And in a real person, there's also an acetabular labrum, which helps further stabilize the hip joint. You might be asking yourself, why does this joint have so many structures to help keep its stability? That is because it is a ball and socket joint, as you can see here. That basically means the wire has a lot of diversity in its movements, a lot of flexibility, 
it's relatively unstable, so it's very likely to dislocate. That's why all these additional structures are in place in order to prevent it from dislocating. All right, let's do a quick recap. All right, the muscles of the gluteal region include the gluteus maximus, innervated by the inferior gluteal nerve, the gluteus medius, gluteus minimus, and the tensor fascia lata, innervated by the superior gluteal nerve. The inner hip muscles are made by the iliacus muscle, innervated by the femoral nerve, the psoas major muscle, innervated by the anterior rami of roots L1 to L3, Obturator internus, innervated by the nerve to obturator internus. Superior gemellus muscle, innervated by the nerve to obturator internus. The obturator externus, innervated by the obturator nerve. The inferior gemellus muscle, innervated by the nerve to quadratus femoris. Quadratus femoris, innervated by the nerve to quadratus femoris. And the piriformis, innervated by the nerve to piriformis. So in the posterior thigh, we discuss some muscles that extend the thigh. These include semitendinosus and semimembranosus as well as biceps femoris. So in the anterior compartment of the thigh, we discuss two important muscles that act in the hip joint. These include sartorius, which acts to flex the thigh, and also rectus femoris, which also acts to flex the thigh. Both of them innervated by the femoral nerve. So the adductor muscles include gracilis, adductor longus, adductor brevis, adductor magnus, pectineus, and sometimes adductor minimus. Most of them are innervated by the obturator nerve, the pectineus has also innervation from the femoral nerve, and adductor magnus has also innervation from the tibial division of the sciatic nerve. The hip joint also has some important ligaments, the iliofemoral ligament, pubofemoral ligament, and ischiofemoral ligaments are all capsular ligaments. There's also the ligament of head of femur and the transverse acetabular ligament. The hip joint is a ball and socket joint, which can perform many movements, but it is relatively unstable. That is why there are so many structures to make it more stable and prevent it from dislocating. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something and I'll see you later. Bye.